got Nick, and this is Simon. Simon, and Simon is going to do the intro. Yeah. Today we have with us an illustrator who produced a number of artwork for album covers and magazines, uh, probably what she's best known for, for musicians such as Elvis Costello, Elvis Clapton, Paul McCartney, and of course, Wings Over America. But during the 80s and 90s, he provided the cover artwork for a number of the Target Doctor Who book claims novelizations. So please welcome Jess Cummins. <laughs> so, uh, first question, Jeff, is um, how did you get into illustrating? Was it something you'd always wanted to do? It was something I always did, really. You know, from day one, I was scribbling on any white space I could find. I don't know why it has to be white, but there you go. You can do what you like with that. Um, but I used to draw on the back of both glass. Uh, my auntie used to give me Christmas cards, she was very popular. Um, I used to draw on the back of them. Um, when I drew, drew a pack of photographs, I used to get slapped from my dad because I just indent them. So yeah, I, I went. Uh, he, it was my dad who said, "Why don't you go to art school?" And I went, "What's one of them?" And um, you can get a job as an artist. And I went, "Cool, yeah." So I did that. Um, amazingly, also got a job as an artist. So that was quite. Fun. Now, I understand that. Uh, when you got to do your art professionally, your first freelance paycheck was for a painting of Bruce Lee and it was sent into a magazine. It was. Was it was. It was. You were very well um, informed. Yeah, I, um, I was, you know, like a lot of people were a Bruce Lee fan. And in fact, I taught him everything that he knows, knew. Um, mm -hmm. I, did, I, just, I just did, you know, I used to, I used to portray my, my heroes. That's how I started. Fantasy land, I suppose. And um, I sent it to a guy called uh, Felix Yen, uh, who's really Felix Dennis, and he was doing Kung Fu Monthly, and he, and he, he straight away um, released it as a poster for the, the magazine, and that's my first thing. And I did a couple of covers with him. Um, he's not around anymore, he died last year, I think. But he, he was amazing, amazing guy. Felix uh, Dennis, of Oz. Felix Dennis. Yeah, yeah. Oz yeah. and uh, he ended up as a poet, amazingly. Um, really, amazingly, <laughs> amazingly. And I went to see him as a poet, and he was, he was fantastic, really fantastic. So yeah, I was a big fan of Felix uh, once I got to know him, and he did, he did some nice stuff with me. He got me sued as well. I did a, a picture of um, Adamant, and he he gave me some photographs that he didn't have any, uh, you know, legal rights to and asked me to change them a bit <laughs> and in those days you could kind of get away with that you know uh, but not they, not they a lot they, they uh, tried to take us to the you know. and the only way they relaxed um, the attack on me was um, Felix unknown to me getting Adamant my original artwork which went missing for many years and nobody when I caught the Phillips player, he admitted that he stole my artwork! That's why But I'm not going to mind it. So, um, reading, on, uh, reading on the website, you've uh, provided covers and illustrations of bands and yeah. singers and you know, all over Mark. So, how did this come about? Yeah, well, just I was a music fan, you know, I was a Beatle fan. Uh, I found, amazingly, I found Paul McCartney in the, in the Yellow Pages, and his office in, uh, he was in Greek Street at the time. Um, I went to see his manager, I had a portfolio full of rubbish, but they gave me a, a he, Brian Brolly his name was, gave me a, a, an opportunity to do an album that they were putting out that wasn't a McCartney album per se, it was a thing called Thrilling Tone, which was a... a, a orchestrated version of the Ram album. I was a big fan of the Ram album. So it was a bit, it was a bit Muzaki. But um, I got to do the whole album. And also, uh, the people who were uh, art directing uh, were Hypnosis, the, uh, the famous um, uh, design agency. And I was a big fan of theirs as well. So I, I was like in the whole set and I just arrived, you know, and I got this opportunity. And doing album covers, um, how close did you get to the musicians? Um, well, I started off really well because 
after Winter for America, um, I got I got a, a kind of audience with Paul, you know, who he, he, he kind of beats us you out and then decide whether you're in or not. And uh, yeah, I got, I, um, and then he was my uh, client one to one, which was great. So he used to he used to um, you know, commission me directly, and then the manager would come in and say, you're not having that much. <laughs> that sort of thing, but it was, it was, you know, it was lovely, and I, I thought that's how it was always going to be. You know, when I worked through record companies or um, through uh, art editors, sometimes it was good, and sometimes it was hopeless. But with the music, particularly, if you could uh, work with band directly, you knew what they wanted, or you, or you knew what they thought they wanted. You know, that kind of thing. So that was always, always the best way to work. So, um, I was looking on your website this week, reading through it, looking at my very old website, all, all, all the covers on it, and you um, talked about collaborating with uh, Paul McCartney on the cover for, um, yeah, yeah um, was it? Um, yeah, it was uh, temporary. Yeah, temporary secretary. Yeah. So, um, a friend of mine keeps telling me that that was his least selling single. <laughs> he takes great pride in that. Um, yeah, it was it was going to be a kind of I mean it's it's a bit of a cheesy cover, and it it was going to be a painting, and it's just him with a sex on his knees, but sexist and all that. You know, I was young. Okay, give me a break. Um, and I didn't get a call back. I did the drawing, but I didn't get a call back, so I assumed that we weren't going to use it. And next time I was in the office, I, I said, you know, is anything happening with that? And they said, oh yeah, it's done. Is that not? <laughs> what? And um, basically, Paul got um, the art director used to colour up my drawings. Had I known what they were going to colour, I would have done it myself. <laughs> but they used to do it on my photographic paper. They used to do it, um, they used to call them PNTs. It means something totally different now. Um, and and the, the ink wouldn't settle, so it kind of pooled and stuff. And he quite liked that look, so he, he just asked for a, a blank and coloured it up, so, so Paul did the, the colour on it, basically. And um, when he came in, a after I'd seen it, when, I, when he came in and I saw it next, he, he just said, well, what do you reckon? And I said, yeah, I quite like it. And I just said, does this mean I play guitar on your next album? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he just gave me that look. <laughs> so, and I could play the guitar, damn it. <laughs> Um, how did you first come to work on the Doctor Who card in book dress in the first place? That was, I think, oh god, Don Rody. Don Rody worked for Wyndham, I think, as, a, as an art editor. And I'd done a few, again, I'm, my, my work was really awful. And uh, although I was very enthusiastic and demanding, um, and he just got me to tighten up my work. Um, if, I, if I sent any samples, it was kind of like very small pictures of big artwork that wasn't very well painted. So we just said, you know, tighten up, tighten up. And uh, I, I came back with a few things and he started commissioning me from there. And he said, oh, I've got some Doctor Who, do you want to do it? I'm like, no. Of course, you know. So I, I was a big Doctor Who uh, at the time. I was behind the sofa like everybody else. Um, yeah, so I loved it, and I, I, I only did a few covers because I was, stupidly, I got bored very quickly and wanted to do other things all the time. So even with albums, I, I did a few albums and then moved on to something else. What a fool, what a fool. I did, what, ten or something? It's a target. Nine. Eight or nine. Eight or nine. Eight or nine, eight, it's going down. <laughs> 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 I did one, I did one, for sure. And got who discovered, of course. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I came out of that, um, it was some guy, he, he was just doing something, I some kind of license with Target, and I did three of those. And then I remember he put the logo right over the face of a dinosaur, which really annoyed me. You want the fifth um, biggest cover artist on Target? Am I? With ten. With, with ten? Yeah. Wow. That means more than Chris Pillis, surely. Uh, Chris Pillis is third with 28. 
Because I'm not really a, a reader as such, you know, that probably explains a lot. Um, I used to just ask, ask them for a, a synopsis of a story. Mm. So I'd, I'd just get a kind of rough idea of what happened. I, I'd go down to, uh, the, there was a BBC photo library, which was just like an office with a few drawers, and you'd, and you'd go, you'd rifle through the, the TV version of that story. And I would just be struck by what I thought was work. So I kind of designed them as I'm flicking through it. I pay them a uh, copyright fee. <laughs> and, uh, and um, you know, draw it from there. And generally, they go straight through it. They, they were always kind of you know, done with this, you know, uh, go with the design and stuff. And I was, I was also, um, weird thing. Uh, Norman Rockwell. Someone introduced me to Norman Rockwell's work. And bizarrely, I kept trying to do Norman Rockwell, hence the circles and stuff, if anyone knows Norman Rockwell's stuff. Yeah? You yeah. can see it Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that was just my, I was trying to kind of emulate him. Uh, I even did it with like albums and stuff as well. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, so that, that was basically it. Yeah. Go to the, um, get a synopsis, go to the photo library, pick up the, the pics. Pay for them. Okay. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, and then go for it. You know, do a pencil drawing. And Sorry. Go from there. I was thinking about the, the whole process of publishing a book, and uh, you'll have a cover on it. They can publish it. They be uh, they the author. How do you relate with everyone else involved in the process? Oh, I know Ter Terence Dix came in a few times, and uh, um, I've got some in in the early days, I mean, he, he would talk through the other day and, and, and he would give me you know, the, the feedback of the covers fairly kindly, <laughs> I'm glad to say. Um, but yeah, basically, it, um, it was really just with me and the uh, art editor at the publisher, and then any feedback would normally come from the people who read the books, you know, and said, you've done the wrong side of the line. <laughs> <laughs> That's a BBC video got it wrong on the first BBC video releases. Oh, did they? Yeah. No, I, I didn't get it wrong, I don't think. You know, um, I, I just thought the uh, Sidemen Mark 1 looked stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, oh, that one's better. So mm -hmm. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't up on the, on the stories at that point. Yeah. If, if, it wasn't, if I missed the TV, then I missed the story. <laughs> Out of the covers you um, did for the target range, have you got a favourite? Is it one that yes? I, 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 I mean, I did get asked that, and I'm, I, I sort of jump between three. I think this one, which is Face People. I think I think it's it's. Um, uh, I can't remember that name of it. <laughs> um, uh, Tom Baker. Got what have I got? Uh, Of Van Rock, I think that's that's my favourite. And, and Tom Baker told me that was his favourite, but he's, he's a bit of a charmer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you would have liked to have done the cover for of the book you didn't do the cover for? Um, I could probably I could I could probably give you an answer if you were asking me about albums. Mm -hmm. But no, no, any any Doctor Who stuff. I, you know, when when I when, when Virgin. Um, started doing the the new stuff later on. They invited me to do some covers, and I, I I think I was really off form at the time. But I was really glad to do them, so so I was all glad to do them always. You know. So it didn't matter, didn't matter what the, what the story was, what the, the subject was. It was always like you know because because I, I was I always tried to do my work. I, I to, to keep it interesting for me, I had to be interested in in 
the subject, so Doctor Who, uh, music and stuff like that, it was always, I'd, I'd go for the kind of work that would interest me, so Doctor Who was always a, a good one. I mean, yeah, um, staying with the new adventures, was it harder to do the covers for the new adventures because you didn't have the BBC image library to get images for that? Yeah, story? I think that's, that's uh, probably quite true. Um, they would just give me um, like Doctor Who monthlies that I could rip off some of these uh, uh, work. Um, <laughs> but a lot of the uh, physical stuff, my wife used to photograph me going, <laughs> like that. So I've got some nice photos knocking around that I'll, uh, I'll bring to one of these one day. Um, my daughter appeared on one of them as well, my little daughter, and I, I bullied her into uh, posing. And she was only that. Um, can't remember what the cover was. Um, <laughs> another hit coming up. Stage of War or something? No. Stage of War. It's one with a little girl with curly ginger hair. <laughs> <laughs> it off. Um, was there a particular house style to the adventures cover? Or were you doing pretty much who you were? Um, it, I, uh, the house style, um, annoy, annoyingly with the, uh, the boxes with the um, graphics, because the target is just like the, all the graphics at the top, and all the nice clean box at the bottom. And you know, we, I guess, I could talk to a few other people, struggled with that bottom uh, type of box. And I'm like the South Sea, it was a little bit of a draft, it really was a draft. Um, also, they were, they, were, they were very quick turnover, so I changed my style to try and uh, hit the deadlines, and I started using watercolor paper and stuff like that. And I don't think it would change it over here, and I think it would change it over here. But yeah, that, that was the point. The real piece for me was, was the way I got it done. Yeah, this is true. Um, a graphical. I won't know for sure. I mean, um, which do you enjoy doing more? The new adventures or the target? Target. Totally. You see. Yeah. Um, like, like I said, I was, I, I was younger, I was hungry, and I was eager. Later on, it was a bit more, I need some work, and I'd, I'd go bang it out. Um, and I think I think he showed. I, I, and, and the thing is, that the lesson I learned from that is these things stay around, especially with the internet. They, they hang around. It's a whole deal. If you do anything rubbish, yeah, they'll always come back and slap you around the top of And I've done plenty of English now. It's a very small opportunity. Um, we don't think that you've written and illustrated a children's book book for what I am saw. Yeah, what can you tell us about what uh, There's a clue in the title. It's that little girl who uh, thinks she got done to the but actually uh, she has. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but actually she has. Yeah, so there's a, there's a few, I mean, it's very simple. Very simple. Yeah. Uh, no. I, I also, kids' books, you know, because I've, I've got four kids. Uh, would be like easy, easy to do, and they're bloody hard, they're really difficult, you know, so, oh, you know, big respect to anyone who does kids books, they're amazing, you know, yeah. um, I just got away with one, so, you know, that was quite nice, just to tick the box at least. Really? Again, going back to your website, and uh, moving on your website, which is worth checking out if anybody wants to Google it, and, um, I see that you um, you've been involved in providing visualizations and storyboards. Was yeah. that something that came as a kind of natural progression from the illustrator? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much that. I mean, uh, when I was working with hypnosis, they they started doing video covers, actually video, video sorry, videos of uh, uh, hot videos. So I uh, storyboard their ideas. And, uh, and then it went on from there, really. Any, anybody who, I could like to this TV uh, recently, I worked with a, a company that did loads of online videos, so I was storyboarding there. So, 
Yeah, it's a natural progression. It's still uh, telling a story through scribbling, basically. Yeah. I think you've done story boards, you've got a straight books, albums, magazine covers, and lots of different types of work there. What are the main differences in which you enjoy doing that? Um, as I said earlier, I think if it, if, if it personally interested me, I, I could go a kick on that. Yeah. But there was there, there was a, a, a an absolutely lovely time where I was kind of really on it and, and doing a lot of work for a lot of different people. And I uh, a friend came down to stay with me for a bit, and we were we were in town somewhere. And he said, well, well, what kind of stuff do you do? And we went into Billy Goat Smith's, I think. And I was able to point. <laughs> so there was a Radio Times cover out, there was a couple of albums, you know, they used to do albums, didn't they? Mm -hmm. um, and there was a couple of albums and uh, and books. So I just went, that, 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 and that. And he, for me at the time, it was kind of natural. But his, his jaw just dropped. <laughs> it was lovely. So that was. That was definitely deep time for me, and that was great. <laughs> I, I thought it would be like that forever. <laughs> but it's not. So yeah, that was great. You know. So it, it, it didn't matter really. I, I, I just, I think, I think uh, I wanted my work to be seen. So I, I, I would go for, you know, high profile. And put them in just just because I knew it would help me get the next job, basically. So a final question for us. Um, have you got any plans for the future or anything coming up? No, I, I, I've just moved. I've gone back to Wales. Um, I gave up. I've, I've worked for a, for a great agency for the last seven years, which was a new thing for me because I've always worked so, um, well, I, I, um, My dad died last year, and I decided to buy his house. I've moved back to North Wales, so I have no job. I walk out of a job and no plans, which is exciting and terrifying. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. <laughs> it's a blank canvas. <laughs> well, we've, we've got a few minutes, so has anyone in the audience got any questions? Or threats? Or threats? <laughs> Yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's me over here. <laughs> yeah, I've always been a fan of yours. Can I play the spoons? I don't. Can you play the spoons? Uh, uh, I think I was the singer on that. Oh, croon and spoons. Croon. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, every Hackman's dimensions. Coming up. I hope so. <laughs> uh, I only saw I only saw one of those videos. You've got any more? I've got two. Stick them on Facebook. I'm sure the first one was better than the second one. I think I was in good voice. Anyway, that was a heckler at the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that one. Derek, Derek, Derek doesn't let me turn up for that one, and I, I really love that. Yeah, see, I've, I've got to know what people uh, up there, what people are saying. It's a bit of a jolly, really. Yeah, I like that. You're so close to uh, gouache, something like that. It was, it was what we used at the college, um, and uh, we, um, yeah, and, and so I stuck with it just because it was what I knew. Um, still, still use it occasionally. So um, I went to um, the nearest art school to my house, which was a, a technical. College in Connors Key, North Wales. I think I think it's Wrexham School of Art now. Oh well, yeah, that, that was it. I did three years there. Most of my my friends that were with me went on to do a Div AD course, and I figured I would get further if I just went and hunted for work, and uh, I did for a bit. But all the ones that went on to the Div did did much better than me in the long run. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, no, they, they, I think they just became more canny, really, you know, and more businesslike, you know, where I was just like uh, enjoying the ride and not really keeping an eye on the, uh, the bank balance. Maybe.
Yeah, you can talk about my accent. Oh, that's good because I've been down the south. Of it. But most most people can't hear yeah, Welsh. Our part of Wales was yeah. quite, yeah, top end, yeah. bit Liverpool. I'm not Yeah, and and yeah, you know, yeah, the Beatles. I mean, my dad, uh, he he managed a band around the Beatles time, and uh, mainly because he had a bed for the van and he could carry their gear and stuff. But he he got them to write their own stuff. He kept saying, look at the Beatles, look at the Beatles. And, um, and the, they, they weren't very talented in that respect. But they did record something. And he went into Brian Epstein's office and stuck their demo in front of him. And he was terrified. And he went back to <laughs> bang, have a listen to that. And I never got back, because uh, they were rubbish. But, uh, <laughs> but that was great. And Any more questions from the audience about that? Hello. Hello. Um, when you are commissioned to do a piece of artwork, be it record cover or an illustration, how much freedom do you get in the design? Are you given a lot of restrictions? Or, yeah. you know, you, you get, well, we want it to have a Dalek, we've got it to have this, we've got it to have that. With Doctor Who, it was me. I, I pretty much uh, kind of, uh, you know, had. had can't blast with that. Uh, the, the later version ones were more kind of pointed. Albums, it depended on the client group. Mm. Normally they told me what to do, and I obeyed. I obeyed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it was kind of mixed. It depended, it depended, but it was always, you know, fun. I was always more comfortable if I was. No, I didn't stay. Okay, well, I'm afraid um, that's the end of it. Yeah, apologies for boring everyone. Jeff is, you're downstairs selling prints. I've got some prints downstairs, yeah. Uh, one new one as well. Yeah, so. One new one. Oh, yeah. Go down and check that out. So, um, please put your hands together for Jeff.